Ah, welcome back to Behind the Bastards, a podcast about the ever-present fear of death and anxiety, pain that is like never leaves, that's just always there in the heart of every single person and drives us to most of the terrible crimes that we commit as a species. Woo! How are you doing, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> What Hello, is the, I'm here and I'm scared. Yeah, yeah we, we're all, we're all, so I, I, I keep and raise goats, uh, and one of my goats mm. gave birth this year, so I've been milking her. You can milk a goat for about a year after they give mm. birth, you know, some, something like that. It kind of depends a little bit. Is it also um, birth control for the goat? I don't know enough about goats biology to tell mm. you that, Sarah. Okay. Um but I, I but appreciate I, you're accepting that that's above your pay grade. Yeah, that's well above my pay grade. I've just <laughs> figured out milking. So- I got this this <laughs> little little lady goat. She's a Nigerian dwarf, so she's she's small. She's about the size mm-hmm. of like a small dog. Um, mm. Nothing bad has ever happened to this animal. She has never been been threatened. She's never been attacked. She's never been like harmed. All that people have ever done for her, all that I've ever done for her, is go is bring her food and other things that she likes. And all that the milking process is is her receiving treats while while she's milked. Um, and still, if I move the wrong way around her, if I like, you know, th- like I have to be, there's very specific ways that I move when she's in there. Cause if I move the wrong way, she will freak out and f- run away. Right. And that's mm-hmm. because she is descended from a long line of prey animals that had to always be ready to be attacked and to try to run mm-hmm. away from danger. Right. It's the same reason why, you know, people f- had a, a whole fun thing on the internet the other, a couple, a few years ago about like if you put, like a cucumber or something out, out slightly oh, yeah. outside of a cat's field of vision, they'll freak out because the their instincts tell them this is a snake. And mm-hmm. we all know this about animals. I'm not like And people it, love to scare their people cats. People love apparently. to scare their cats to make them feel <laughs> like, you know, they're and it it it's interesting to me because like currently in right wing media, there's this huge thing with like biological reality and you know we're going against these deeply programmed things when people are allowed to be transgender or like biologically men are meant to fight in a phalanx with a spear and like you're you know this is why you need to pay ten thousand dollars to have a man yell at you while you do push-ups otherwise you're not connected to your your like ancestral masculinity you got to eat raw meat you know whatever kind of fucking nonsense and everyone's fine with like or all of these people are fine with the idea that like You know, my ancestral men were hunters and fighters, so I need to do hunting and fighting stuff in order to be like truly happy. But nobody likes the nobody likes being told. Nobody's willing to accept that, like, well, your ancestors were constantly at threat from various kinds of animals. And so there is always fear in your heart and nothing, nothing will ever Mm. make that go away. Like you just have to learn how to deal with it and cope with it because we grew up in a world that was deeply, deeply dangerous in ways that like it is not anymore. And that's just, will always be with you. And none of these people want to accept that they want to, they, they want to take the parts of like ancient humanity that are like standing with a shield and a spear or trying to hunt a fucking gazelle, but they don't want to accept that like the actual thing that will never leave us because of our ancestors Mm -hmm. is fear. I don't want to be too dramatic, but I feel like I'm having a breakthrough right now because (laughs) I feel like I have been treating like my my life and also the therapy that I've been doing as an approach to like, well, I feel really fearful and anxious a lot. And that's a failing on my part or like not a moral failing, but like that's something that's wrong with me that has to do with my personal history. And it's a problem. And I and, you know, and I to be clear, like I do think that I need to deal with that. And we all need to learn how to manage fear in our own ways. Um and also to trust it at times, but seeing it as something that's just part of the organisms we are instead of this idea of like an invading presence that shouldn't be there. Like it's just right. It's like, it's natural for us to be afraid. That's what we're, how, what we are. Yeah. What I, what I'd like people at home to do, you know, (laughs) the next time the fear hits you, right. And you find yourself wondering, why am I so afraid? Instead of burrowing into like whatever you said in your like going on Twitter and, you know, doom scrolling or any of that stuff, Mm. get on the Internet and look up a picture of the skull of a cave bear. (laughs) Cave bears don't exist anymore, but they're much larger than all of the all present day bears are small compared Mm -hmm. to cave bears. They were like the elephants of bears and they used to murder the shit out of us. Um, 
and look at look at the skull of a cave bear and realize like that's why I'm scared right now. It's because many many years ago, my ancestors had to constantly be worried about this fucking thing charging out of whatever cave and murdering their entire family. And so now I'm sitting at home in my air conditioned house where there are no cave bears and I'm scared. <laughs> like just look at a picture Marry of the cave one. bear. That's why you're scared. <laughs> like yeah. it's also. <laughs> Just to, to bring it into horror movies, as I must, like, it's fascinating how so many horror movies, because the house without a cave bear makes me think of Barbarian, um, and that so many horror movies are about the idea, and horror stories before that are about the idea of something that wants to kill your Ryu coming out of the past. Yeah. Either because of, you know, traumas or misdeeds of the past, or just from the past in some way, because we act like the present is all about our thriving and having fun and being wholesome, but really when we're focusing on that, we understand on some level, like modernity itself is sort of a denial of death. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like what all of these like Silicon Valley dudes who just like were born at the right time to get incredibly <laughs> lucky gambling on, you know, fucking uh, tech companies and suddenly made a billion dollars or whatever. Like none of them can get over the fact that they're always scared too, despite all their money and their bodyguards. And so they, they concoct these, you know, insane things to like, I'm going to live forever if I do this or, you know, it, it's this, it's this, it, it's all this denial of the reality and inevitability of death. Um, yeah. And also this denial that like fundamentally we're descended from like, Little bitty dudes and ladies who there were bigger things around that ate them. <laughs> and so we were scared it's of so those true. things. We there really used to be birds that ate eaten. horses. <laughs> like yeah. it's only it's it's so recently in human existence that we've stopped getting eaten all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, we were constantly getting eaten by shit. We were scared little guys. Like <laughs> uh, and so that's were so our yummy, cats. You know? Like just ex like that's the same reason, like what you got you get like a duck why is my dog anxious all the time well it's because it's descended from like little guys who had to be worried all the time we all are it's fine <laughs> anyway sarah on the 79th or whatever anniversary of the day the classic michael bay movie pearl harbor was inspired a woman oh named katie Sorensen, 30 years old visited a mm -hmm. michael's craft store in petaluma california with her four-year-old son and one-year-old daughter now, Petaluma is basically a suburb of San Francisco. This is relevant to the tech industry stuff we were talking about. The median household mm. income is over $100,000 a year. This is a wealthy suburb, and the crime rate in Petaluma is about 1.4 times below the national average. So, fairly mm. safe place. Um, but despite how safe and affluent the suburb she lives in is, Katie Sorensen was scared. And Katie Sorensen was also a small-time influencer on Instagram. Uh, she's like oh, a mommy boy. influencer, right? Um, now, her shit has been thoroughly scrubbed from the in internet because of what happened next, but based on context clues, I think it's fairly safe to say that none of her frequent updates uh, prior to December 7th got that much traction. She was, in other words, like a failing momfluencer who was desperate to find something that would bring followers to her account. And mm -hmm. here is the post that she made in an attempt to do that. Uh, this week, my children were the targets of attempted kidnap, um, which is such a weird thing to even vocalize. Um, but it happened. Um, and I want to share that story with you in an effort to raise awareness as to what signs to look for um, and to just encourage parents to be more aware of their surroundings and what is going on around oh, them. Um, I think right now we are so distracted by um, everything that's going on in the world that we are kind of um, have our guards up so much about um, masks and wanting to keep our children safe that way that we're forgetting the most important way to keep them safe and that is with us um, and to not have them taken. So I'm going to share a story um, in an effort to raise that awareness but it's, I'm not ready. I This is hard for me. I'm not ready to share this story but I, I know it's important and I would rather be uncomfortable um, and awkward the, and get the message out sooner than wait until I feel composed. Um. Okay, that's probably enough, Soapy. So you can see here both, if you think back to the chain letters we were talking about, right? If you think back to that murderer in the backseat chain letter we read, mm -hmm. you can see the same structural hallmarks here, right? 
parent, there's the claim that like parents are not someone like the person mm-hmm. that this is meant for. You're not paying enough attention to mm-hmm. a danger that you're not aware of, but it's present, right? You need to be more aware of this danger. You need to be more aware of the threat that your kids are always facing, right? There's this, it's it's framed in this, like, here are suggestions. Like, I'm telling you this so that you can avoid this danger, so that mm-hmm. you can protect yourself and your loved ones. Um, and from there on, like from the point that, you know, we stopped that video, her, the story that she was giving continued. Uh, and I'm going to read a summary of what she said in this in another video uh, from a local Sonoma paper, The Press Democrat. Mm-hmm. She described being followed by an unknown man and woman at the Petaluma Michaels Craft Store on North McDowell Boulevard from the time she arrived in the parking lot with her children until they returned to her car. In the parking lot, she said the couple approached her as she was putting one of her children in a car seat in what she suspected was an attempt to grab the stroller. A separate man who spotted Sorensen and recognized she was in danger stepped in to help, she said in the videos. Meanwhile, she said the pair drove off. And like, first off, if you are taking your kid to a Michael's craft store, the worst thing that is going to happen to you that day is being in a Michael's craft store, right? <laughs> you, they are not going to get kidnapped. Um, other unpleasant. Th- in there. Yeah, yeah. I would prefer to be kidnapped to being in a, a Michael's craft store. You know, you meet better people getting kidnapped than you do. What at the did Michaels. a Michael's craft store do to you? I don't know. I have nothing have you against been Michaels. To just, a Michael's craft store? Yes, actually, I what have. Did you the last buy? time I needed, I needed styrofoam cones. Oh. And if you need, if you need a cone in a shape that's made out of styrofoam, or if, you, if you need something that's made fair. out of styrofoam, <laughs> like that's that's where you go as a Michael's. I've had many pleasant experiences <laughs> at Michael's craft store. Just saying, and was no, never no. kidnapped. No. I, uh, I, 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 I only go, I roll to the Michaels. Like I'm, I'm heading to like downtown Fallujah in 2005. <laughs> you know, you gotta be ready at a Michaels. That's where shit goes down. It's the hurt um, locker. It's the hurt locker. Yeah. I'm like, like rolling into a Michaels in that, in that hurt locker body armor. <laughs> this will stop them from taking me. Yeah. It'll so, stop any glitter from getting uh, onto your that's clothes. That's right. That's right. Importantly. So Sorensen in addition to posting these videos, the first of which almost immediately gets to like 2 million views, which was had never happened to her account before, she makes a kidnapping report to the Petaluma police, right? Um, so they deemed this a suspicious person's case. Um, so her, her video goes viral. She makes a report to the police. She publishes a second video. And here's, there's a number of dumb things that, that Sorensen does, but the, the, the stupidest mis- like error that she makes in this grift is in her second video, she brags that there are, like, in order to market it, she says there are details in the video that she didn't give the cops, which is like saying oh in your God. viral video, I made a false police report. <laughs> you know, don't Girl. do that as a, as a heads up. If you're going to commit this crime, don't, don't make that mistake. So <clears throat> that said, her marketing is good. These videos get <laughs> about four and a half million views combined together. But the, it's a bad idea from a not getting arrested standpoint, because well, mm-hmm. if you don't make a police report, you can get away with this kind of thing any amount of time, right? If you're just like posting videos saying my kids were nearly kidnapped, here's what to avoid, that's fine. Once you make a police report, uh, y- you have created a situation in which you might get in trouble. And Sorensen mm-hmm. probably still would have been okay. But in addition to making a police report, she made the further mistake of accusing specific people who mm-hmm. had names of having been the wannabe pedophile child abductors, right? Uh, uh, so uh. the specific people that she made allegations against were another couple that was just at Michael's that day, uh, Eddie and Sadie Martinez. Again, like she sees like a Hispanic couple in the store. Uh, mm-hmm. she, she decides and she claims in her videos that she heard them describing her children on the phone with a third party. So she thinks they're like spotters talking back to the the kidnapping base about like these kids they can steal and can we just she, talk about this operation like they're like yeah, yeah what, we're running short on think? three-year-old white kids grab her yeah. yeah yeah we got oh we needed it we need another like uh this this one's like blonde she's got a jumper on do we need another jumper kid yeah like <laughs> go ahead and get her um so she she not only does she give these people's identification she like describes them to the police but she takes pictures of them in the store and she posts oh it on her Instagram. Oh, honey. So no. The Martinez's find out about this cuz these posts go viral and her son comes up to Sadie mm-hmm. Martinez and is like, "Hey mom, <laughs> Somebody claims that you were part of a kidnapping gang at Michaels. You might want to. You might want to be aware of this. 
I also love how like, okay, so you're in this elite kidnapping gang. Yeah. Love it. You're like, where should we go to pick up kids without being noticed? Yeah. Michael's craft. Michael's craft store. We're just going to cruise store. around a store in a, a mini mall yeah. with 8,000 cameras in it. That's also the least. Cause, like, if you were to tell me this is a kidnapping gang that specifically abducts like 64 year old women. Right. I'd be like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, that's a Michaels. That's that. De- that's definitely where you're going to abduct. And that's or like, where you go for that. Yeah. For sure. Or guys yeah. who are weirdly into model trains. Yeah. You're <laughs> going to get a lot of that stuff at a Michaels. But like kids don't go to Michaels. Children do not like Michaels. It's not the it's it's the place to get like kind of vaguely unsettling Christmas decorations. That's what I go to Michaels for. Right. You know, Which kidnappers for, love. So, yeah, kidnappers so maybe love. they're there on an errand. Anyway, and again, the Martinez's are the kind of people who go to to a Michael's, right? They're like a, a middle-aged couple shopping for mm-hmm. whatever kind of decorations together. Um, but this lady decides, like, nope, they're part of a kidnapping gang. That's the only reason why, you know, a, a couple would be at a Michael's craft store is to people steal my children. Don't shop. Yeah, is to steal my white children. Now oh my this this happens. Nobody Sorenson, wants white children. They're terrible. No, no, horrible. You can't this, feed them anything anymore without them having an incident. No, they all got they all got allergies, you know, which is because they're not actually abiding by the primal principles and eating nothing but raw liver. Exactly. Sarah. You got to eat yep. the raw liver. Have you, Otherwise, yeah, it, you'll it, never get big and strong like thank that you. man who was not on steroids. Thank you. Look, this is why I am getting in to the, the to the liver influencer business. Uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm specifically selling freeze-dried polar bear liver. Now, Sarah a lot of doctors, the same guys in the pharma con- industrial complex will tell you that even a single bite of polar bear liver will kill you because of how concentrated the, the vitamins are. It's basically poison. That's what doctors say. But, you know, mm. if we've learned one thing from the pandemic, it's that you can't trust doctors. So I'm going to start selling polar bear liver. I I think the grenades are going to be more ethical, but you know, yeah, forget forget about the Franklin mm. expedition, yeah, or Look, whichever one they all died from doing that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. the future. Look, they died because they didn't have a grenade launcher. If you have a <laughs> grenade launcher and you eat the polar bear liver, then you're fine. Then it's all the ever present fear of death will leave you. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know, small yeah. price to pay. It's what five ninety nine a month for your uh, your liver club. It's it's like three hundred and forty seven dollars a week. Actually. What a bargain! It's, it is not, <laughs> Sarah. The, the feds do not like you taking this many livers from this many polar bears. It has made a lot of problems for me, but I do it for you, listeners. But you, so, you know, the cost covers legal fees. Yeah, yeah. So Sorensen makes this post and accuses the Martinez of being pedophile kidnappers. Um, right in the middle of that period, you remember a couple of years back where there were a bunch of viral stories of like white people calling the cops on people who are not white for bullshit reasons, mm-hmm. right? There's that lady mm-hmm. who threatened that black bird watcher in Central Park. Oh, yeah. There was, yeah. The, um, there was a lady who called 911 on like a, a black family in Oakland cooking barbecue in the park, you know? These are kind of like, again, in that like Karen sort of viral story theme, which is almost as reliable a traffic getter as a uh, kidnapping stories. Um, so as soon as the Martinez is like came forward and are like, this fucking mommy blogger, like, or mommy influencer or whatever, like accused us of being a pedophile gang, the virality that had been really good for Sorensen's mm. follower count initially kind of came back to bite her in the ass. So the Petaluma police made a timely update being like, you know, there are inconsistencies between the police report she filed and the story she did on Instagram. Sorensen compounded her mistakes by doubling down and was like, I want to see these people prosecuted. I'll testify in court that they were trying to steal my kids. The Michaels people, you know, the cops talked to them and Michaels is like, we didn't see anything problematic happen. There's no evidence of anything happening. Um, so this all ends in Sorensen getting charged in 2021 with three misdemeanor counts of false report of a crime. She was convicted on one count and sentenced earlier this year, just a couple weeks ago, to 12 months of what's called informal probation, um, hmm. which restricts her from using social media and requires a four-hour implicit bias training. She's going to spend all probably- have that. <laughs> Definitely, like, look, I, 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 yeah, hard to argue with the fact that, like, this lady being off social media is good for her, right? She, she, this, she should not be on the internet. None of us really should. None of us um, really should, but especially not her. Especially and, not but her. But, but wow, that I mean, 
you know, I I don't think harsher punishment fixes anything for anybody. No. It's a question of who gets too much rather than who gets too little. But yeah, it is. I mean, that is an in, that's um a remarkably light sentence for fucking up someone's yeah. life that much. I'll say that she's probably going to spend, I think, like thirty days in jail, and then she's got like a work release program. So mm. you know, it's not. I don't know, like what I I would say is like the proper penalty here or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, it, I, I'm not angry that it's like too harsh. I'll say that much. Right. Um, right. So while this has been celebrated online, you know, as soon as this, this lady got convicted, you know, people were obviously like, look, this dumb racist committed fraud and they, they paid the price. Um, despite the fact that like, that's kind of how the story has gotten, you know, remembered now, Sorensen had a pretty good reason to think that this would work out for her because again, Fake kidnapping stories are one of the most reliable kinds of viral content in multiple forms of social media. In 2019, Snopes started receiving inquiries about a Facebook meme that warned of a sex trafficking plot in Florence, Kentucky. Uh, Variations of this meme tended to show a photo of a red rose stuck to a car door with text like this. There have been recent incidents in northern Kentucky about sex traffickers leaving roses on victims' cars. The roses have a chemical on them to make you pass out so they can grab you. One incident happened in a Walmart parking lot in Florence, Kentucky. Please be careful, ladies. Um, yeah, First of all, there's a lot worse happening in a Walmart parking lot. Oh, God, uh, especially It's where all Florence. humanity comes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a, I, I'm glad to hear it's not southern Kentucky, just northern Kentucky. There you go. Yeah. Very northern localized. Kentucky. Well, you know, the, the, the specific poison that you can put on a rose only grows in northern Kentucky. So it, it's hard to get down oh, into well, the south. Yeah. 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 I don't like it. If I were going to start a sex trafficking ring, I would go for a population center. I would be worried about starting mm -hmm. from scratch. Uh, Yeah. But I'm not an expert. Yeah. No, no. We, I mean, we do talk frequently about like what we would do were we running a sex trafficking ring. But I think we can all agree Florence, Kentucky is where you do is where you start. (laughs) <laughs> that's this the, is like you know M- michelle remembers the book that started the satanic panic yeah. is like there are two centers worldwide centers for organized satanism and they are i think geneva switzerland and sure. victoria bc and it's like yep yeah of course why did they yeah. was it for the climate do they get to nice. take walks yeah. in the woods yeah all right satanists whale love walking. rain too yeah they do yeah, with the whale do. watching yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so Comments on one example of this meme, which was shared about six and a half thousand times on Facebook, <laughs> range from readers pointing out that it's an obvious fake to crying about how depraved the world has become and talking about how they always bring a gun with them everywhere. Snopes <laughs> quickly found that the photo for the initial version of the meme was a fake. It was pulled from an unrelated blog post. It was just like someone, I don't know, you know, people put roses in car doors or whatever. It's like a, here's your Valentine's right. Day, you know, thing, honey, or whatever. Like, that's, I'm I think. sorry, what, I cheated on you. From. I hope you see this when you finish your shift at Arby's. Yeah, there, like, something like that. Um, so what that means, though, is because the original photo had nothing to do with a kidnapping conspiracy, there was intent behind the fake, right? We can debate mm. as to whether or not maybe right. Sorensen huh. was, like, someone who just was unreasonably paranoid or whatever. Um, although I think she was probably making a conscious fake. But this was definitely a conscious fake. This is not somebody panicking because their brain got poisoned by viral media or whatever. This is someone choosing to knowingly spread a false kidnapping story. And I'm going to read another quote from that Snopes article. The 2019 Rose hoax was not the first sex trafficking scare to emerge from Kentucky in recent years. In late 2017, some social media users in the Louisville and Florence area in the north of the state claimed to have been approached or harassed in public. Those purported incidents were quickly linked without evidence to human trafficking and the local branch of a controversial church was forced to defend its member against allegations of sex trafficking. And this is this is a little where it gets weird, because a big part of why Kentucky is key to that, or is, is, is center to so many of these memes, is that there's a church in northern Kentucky called the World Mission Society of God. Um, it is absolutely a cult. Mm. It's one of those weird Seventh-day Adventist cults that was founded in South Korea by a guy who declared himself Jesus Christ. Um, you know, it's one of those things. There's a couple of those, right? <laughs> um, and they have been, they, it's definitely one of those things where like they've been accused of like brainwashing and abusive psychological control tactics, but they don't take people off the street. What's happening here is that mm-hmm. like this cult is in, mm-hmm. is local. People know it's shady. And when folks come up to them to proselytize, they think that they're about to be like kidnapped. And so that's part of where all this comes from. 
Um, they have been accused of human trafficking in a bunch <laughs> of places, but they've never been convicted of anything. Police have cleared them. I don't, I don't have any desire to defend this cult, but I don't think what they're doing is like pulling people right. off the street. I think it's what nor what cults do, right? It's normal cult stuff. Um, and right, in this and to case, compare it case, to yeah. maybe our most successful cult, Scientology, like you don't have to grab people, you just let them wander into your center downtown, and then yeah. you traffic them. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a a tunnel spider or the snakes that uh, were the ancestor of the cucumbers that scare our cats. Um, that's I think that works. Yeah, that's more or less <laughs> fine. So, <clears throat> in this case, in the case of these specific conspiracy theories. Uh, the police in Kentucky were like, have been like reasonably good about being like, there's no evidence behind this. Uh, but as a general rule, law enforcement is usually part of the hype cycle of these sort of like fake kidnapping rumors uh, than they are part mm-hmm. of washing the hype cycle. In 2019, Facebook memes started spreading in College Station, Texas, about a kidnapping plot that involved zip tying a victim's windshield wipers together and then abducting the inevitably female victim while she struggles to take them off. One version of the meme ends with this very chain lettery call to action. I've made this post public and would love it if you'd share it with your friends and family. Please be aware of your surroundings and drive somewhere safe with a lot of people around before trying to remove them if this happens to you. And the College Station police started getting queries once this post went viral. And so they took to Twitter and they posted on Twitter, did you see the post about zip ties and human trafficking? We don't know whether traffickers are doing this or if it's a distraction technique used by a would-be thief. Either way, always be aware of your surroundings and hashtag see something, say something. (laughs) So they immediately like buy into this and spread this Mm -hmm. absolute nonsense. And then roughly a week later, after people get angry at them, post an update saying, to be clear, zip ties were described to officers as having been found in a college station uh, mall parking lot. However, it is extremely unlikely this tactic would be related to human trafficking. Hashtag verify facts before sharing alarming posts. Thanks. That, that's not how hashtags work, college station police department. Yeah. But also, you are the ones who didn't verify shit before sharing it. That's so, so weird. Like, hey, past yeah. self three hours ago mm-hmm. do better don't God. have done I, it's also like well, why else would people be zip tying windshield wiper I don't know do kids are fucking with people look I may have at a certain point when I was drunk and younger stolen a bike lock and locked the gates of an apartment complex you know for no reason other than I was a drunk little asshole you know maybe I did that uh, Z- sometimes these theories never allow for the existence of drunk little assholes and it's a major yes, flaw yes yes yeah, like, and it, it's, again, it's it's this Occam's razor sort of thing. What is mm-hmm. what is the, is is the simplest, likeliest explanation human trafficking gangs are carrying out a complicated plot or some asshole did a thing? Like, eh, it's probably like, someone it's, being I, a I shitty. I feel like some asshole is it, you know, 98% of the time, and then the other mm-hmm. 2%, it's pretty much the government. Yeah, it's either an asshole or the government, right? <laughs> um, speaking of, the government. You know who governs my life, Sarah? <laughs> oh, sorry, my phone just picked that moment to vibrate like crazy. Wow, wow. Well, while, while, while Sarah checks her phone, you should check out these advertisements. Wow! Those products. My God. Have you ever seen a service like that? No. Not me. Sarah, I, I have to, like the college station police say, if I, I'm going to do the see something, say something thing here, because mm-hmm. you knocked over your recorder and then bent down to get it without checking to see if a kidnapping gang was any, they might have knocked your recorder off the desk so that they could get you. I mean, the thing is, there's been a kidnapper under my bed for three weeks now, but mm-hmm. I mean, he's just passed out under there. I think he yeah. just needed a place to relax and it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, thank, I'm thank going you again. By the way, <laughs> hashtag uh, kidnappers need shelter too. I don't know. I don't know Aww. what I'm doing there. So it is uh, like, I, yeah, the kidnapper is a great way to see any person in your field of vision who you don't want to see as a fellow human being. So yeah, yeah, they're kidnappers. They're pedophiles. They're a, a rape gang or whatever. Um, yeah, it's it's. I mean, that's part of how this like thing can be utilized by fascists, right? Fundamentally fascism's power comes from the fact that we're all anxious and scared all the time. And if you can convince people that you can take that anxiety away by hurting a specific group, 
then you can do a lot of things. You can get away with quite a bit, it turns out. Um, and you can all wear snazzy little outfits because apparently <sighs> what men want is to wear snazzy little outfits, but it doesn't occur yep. to them to just do something harmless like drill team. Yeah, and unfortunately, I feel like we were trying for like for a while. There was the idea that like, what if we let men dress up in snazzy little outfits and pretend to be, you know, soldiers or fascists? Will that make them less, you know, likely to do real world harm? And no, uh, apparently not. Yeah, um, we, tried, just, we tried it. We and, tried it. Uh, we tried no. it, folks. No, sorry. So another frequent spreader of bullshit kidnapping stories are local radio stations, which often find themselves desperate for content uh, that they can read live on air uh, to hopefully keep people tuning in. And also who often like run little SEO websites that exist to pull in views based on keywords and shit in order to get advertising money. Of um, course. Our, uh, our, our employers come into this story in a, a little bit. So one example of this comes from February 2021, when a local Omaha radio station, KFAB, posted an article on their website titled, If you find a water bottle on your car, drive away. You might be in danger. Now, wow, the and ti- just ruined Jessica's water bottle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the title there is a pretty perfect blend of both SEO-friendly click, uh, you know, click, getting titling, and old-school mm-hmm. chain letter tactics, right? Uh, the article warned readers that unspecified abductors were leaving water bottles on cars to mark their targets. This is a tactic used by traffickers and kidnappers to get you to exit your vehicle and take whatever is on top of the car off. If you have this happen and something is on the hood of your car, when you come back to it, leave it there. Drive away. It'll fall off on its own. It's like... <sighs> Also, like, and I say this in exasperation frequently, but has no one seen Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer? You just got to follow somebody home. You don't have to do the water bottle trick. Henry is not wasting his money on water bottles. Yeah, that that gets expensive and it's bad for the ocean. We support here at at Cool Zone ethical kidnapping, right? If you're going to (laughs) run a kidnapping gang, abducting people from Target parking lots, please don't waste water bottles or use recycled water bottles, right? Those boxes of water, you can put a box of water on top of somebody's car, steal them, traffic them, you know, sell them to Algeria, you right? You know, that's fine. That's what ethical. What can't boxed water do? Yeah. That's why when 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 we sell uh, enslaved suburban white people here at Cool Zone Media, each one of them mm-hmm. comes with a guarantee that no plastic water bottles will u- be used <laughs> in the abduction, right? All, all, all of those, it's all those like cans of liquid death. That's what we do. You know, we have, we have a sponsorship with the liquid death people for our kidnapping gangs. It's so hard to ethically Mm -hmm. kidnap these days. It's great to know people are still doing it. Yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it, Sarah. You know, the the extra, it costs us a little more. It does cut down on profits a little bit, but I feel like, you know, that's our responsibility as a, as a, as a member of the community. You know, we want to give back. But you're not just kidnapping to make money. You're kidnapping because you love it. It's the love of the game, right? <laughs> I, I, it makes me so sad that there's all these nickel and diming kidnappers out there, right? You're in the best industry in the world, baby. You know, enjoy it. <sighs> <laughs> See? That's, yeah. all, that's just all there is to it. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I, I probably don't need to tell you. There's zero evidence that kidnappers are using water bottles to trick people. Uh, Snopes again, notes, like if you, if you, if you, if you, if someone has already entered their car and you need them to exit it again to take off a water bottle, it uh, seems like you've had ample opportunity to kidnap them already. Like if you need to kidnap, none of it them, makes much sense. Them. <laughs> and I, I probably don't need to tell you that there's zero evidence for this. Uh, Snopes notes that the origin for this version of the story was a TikTok video posted by, quote, a woman who said she had a random encounter with a stranger acting oddly around her car in a mall parking lot and later found a water bottle on the hood of her car and posited, based on nothing, that these two things were somehow related. Let me tell you something. I had a weird interaction in a parking lot last night at Winco, and you know where that was? It's because I was at Winco. Yeah. People at Winco are having a time... And we're all getting through it. And I mean, parking lots are one of the rare spaces where people from different walks of life are forced to interact. And uh, you can, yeah, you can see that in these reactions. That's why so many, uh, that's why it's all parking lots. And that's why like affluent people have to use the same parking lots as everyone else. Mm. And they often uh, resent that deeply. And, Hmm. you know, they're probably, Mm -hmm. a lot of them are the same kind of people who believe that like, the existence of homeless folks is like a constant threat to their life, right? Mm-hmm. That like it's the greatest mm-hmm. threat in the world is that there are homeless people somewhere. Um, or that, uh, you know, 
uh, if if the uh, more high density low income housing is created in their town it'll like ruin you know their their life or whatever like it's it's mm-hmm. it's this you it's the same reason why rich people hate the TSA with a special passion that they don't reserve for like regular <laughs> cops it's because they can't avoid the TSA unless they're super mm-hmm. super rich but like normal rich people have to go through the same TSA that the rest of us do and they hate it um yeah, anyway, it's whatever. I uh I, I like I It's it's I think a lot of this probably is the result of people who don't normally go out in the world in a situation where they don't have total control, like, you know, mm-hmm. and they encounter someone who is either having a mental health crisis or just mm-hmm. is a kind of person they wouldn't socialize with normally and they this this sets off that part in their brain that like corresponds to the part of the brain that gets set off in a cat that sees a cucumber, right? <laughs> and they and they feel like I'm in danger now. I'm in danger because yeah. something like un unfamiliar has occurred. Uh, and then the pattern making parts of our brain like put together, you know, the rest of it, right? But like, oh, I found a water bottle on my car, and 30 minutes earlier, I saw a person who was like talking to themselves, and so this must be evidence of an international kidnapping gang. <laughs> and so who would put a water bottle on mm-hmm. my car, but someone having a mental health episode who yeah. clearly is therefore in the perfect position to run a kidnapping ring. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's great. So, and it's like, I mean, think of when little kids meet somebody new yeah, and that they feel unsure and they are freaked out and then they need a second to warm up and then they take it and they, don't develop a conspiracy theory about that person, which I think is really charming of them. What I what I love, Sarah, what makes me really happy and feel good about the future is thinking about how many of the people who make these little conspiracy theories based on uh, anodyne shit uh, mm-hmm. then repeat those conspiracy theories to their children and say, you must be worried at all times. There's always, <laughs> there's kidnapping gangs everywhere. Mommy saved you from kidnappers mm-hmm. today by noticing the water bottle and then pulling her Glock out in the parking lot. Oh you know, God. like it's yeah. great. <laughs> it's cool that that It'll happens. It's great for the kids. It's, it's known to, it's shown yeah. to be great for the kids. My God. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. dope. So <clears throat> what we are seeing here in that story I just related is evidence of the kind of food chain that these fake crime kidnapping panic stories exist in. So the story is cooked up initially by a mix of people who are just a little out of their minds or by actual bad actors wanting to spread conspiracy theories and paranoia and stuff on Facebook Mm -hmm. or TikTok. Um, Oftentimes it's people who like are spreading stuff they know is not true because they know it will get them followers um, mm-hmm. And then the laziest actors in our media ecosystem, the people putting together these shitty little SEO grabbing articles for like local news sites and st- shit, take this viral story, churn out a quick article with no fact checking, and that helps the story spread even further, right? Mm-hmm. And it makes it seem like it's a real thing because now, look, that's a news station that's covering this thing. There must be an epidemic. Um, I found one example of one of these articles on Distractify, which exists making taking shit that went viral on the internet and turning it into very low quality content. Um, right. The article seems to have been inspired by a TikTok video posted by a woman named Erin Dawn, who recorded a four minute video about coming back from a shopping trip and finding a sheet of paper on her car door she claims was soaked in a chemical that injured her. Now, Erin okay. provides no photographic. Was it Aaron? <laughs> No, she. May, uh, we'll get to that, but like, it, she provided no evidence that this had happened at all. But she did film a recreation of finding the paper on her car, where like she put a piece of paper on her car and filmed Aaron, herself finding it. You are not yeah. Robert Stack. This is not unsolved mysteries. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so everyone gets to be Robert Stack now. That's what TikTok has given oh us. My- God, they do. <laughs> so she narrates over this recreation that she films. When I saw it, I just picked it up with my fingernails and I tossed it out. I didn't t- touch the napkin, but guess what? I still opened the door with my fingertips. I asked my husband, did you put a napkin in my door? And he was like, no. So immediately I started looking for hand sanitizer. Now, she experienced no real symptoms because poisons mm-hmm. like this are so difficult to make and apply th- uh, that they functionally don't exist, right? Mm-hmm. It, could someone make a poison that you could like put on a napkin and it could impact? Yes, but it's like, that's like the CIA, right? Like right. random kid, like- Or like Putin. Or Putin. And like, here's the thing, like Putin has done it a few times, right? But like, 
it didn't work fair. Like uh, the wrong people got got a lot of the time. Like mm-hmm. if you look up, we've covered like the fucking uh, Sidney Gottlieb. I think he was the CIA's poisoner in chief. And like mm. they were bad at it. Like they kept trying to make these poisons and like usually it would not work very. That's why Fidel Castro was still alive, right? None of this stuff works very well. It certainly does not work reliably enough to be abducting people from target parking lots <laughs> um, as like a casual deal. Um, so and he was on what is her name? Uh, Aaron uh, Dawn. Yeah, they're like, let's use like really top notch stuff on Aaron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, it's one of those, it, it, it does remind me a little bit about, like, right after 9-11 happened, kids in my middle school were like, Al-Qaeda's gonna get our school next, and it's like, I don't know, man, I don't yeah. think Al-Qaeda, I don't think Osama bin Laden is aware of Plano, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're probably good, actually. <laughs> um, but it is like, you know, I think that it, it like... After 9-11, people believe that kind of shit because they just seen an insane thing happen on television, right? Yeah. People flew, And I think part of why folks are more primed to believe stuff like this is they, you know, they're on the news and they hear like, oh, all of these cops, you know, had seizures because they were near a fentanyl thing. And like, that's bullshit. That's not real. But like a lot of the cops who are having these reactions like a lot of them are lying, but a lot of them are just people like they have bought it, right? Like they're having a hysterical mm-hmm. reaction because mm-hmm. they are also dumb little monkeys who are scared all the time. And someone gave them a focus for it. Right. And mm-hmm. Aaron, whether she's a con artist or a dumb little monkey claims that she had horrible reactions as a result of this poison, that her hand went numb. She had her husband take their, and it's, it's really interesting. Cause like um, her husband, she had her call nine one one. And she specifically says that they called 911 because they weren't in their normal area and didn't know where the nearest ER was, which I also feel like says a lot about them. We're like, Mm -hmm. we're always thinking about where the nearest ER is, you know, but we left our normal area. You know, don't ever leave your normal area because then you won't know where the, like, if when you get poisoned by kidnappers. (laughs) Um, It's very like terrier logic. You're just like, I just like to be in my area. It's And it's like, okay, but that means that your fears when you're outside your area aren't necessarily about what's really happening. Yes. Um, She claims that the doctors at the hospital diagnosed her with acute poisoning from an unknown substance. Good Um, Karen. It's interesting. I'm mainly interested in this because of the way that this gets covered by Distractify, uh, who they dress their their article about Aaron's bullshit in like, I would say it's like the panoply of journalism, right? They put journalism's (laughs) clothes on this story, but it's Mm -hmm. not really journalism. Here's how the article opens. According to the ACLU, there are anywhere from 14,500 to 17,500 people trafficked in the United States each and every year. In 2019, California reported the highest number of cases in the country, with 1,507 people trafficked in the state alone. A staggering 32% of people who were trafficked were purportedly done so by an intimate partner of theirs. However, there have been a growing number of kidnapping stories attempts circulating on social media that are tied to trafficking. So you see oh, what they're doing there. First off, like... Hey, you want to know what all those, uh, most of those human trafficking cases are and like fucking Californian, whatever? It's not uh, suburban moms getting abducted in parking lots. It's the people who pick your fucking fruit, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's it, that, that is super common. Mm-hmm. Um, and it obviously is a huge problem, but it's not the kind of problem that you can make Erin Dawn care about, right? Because mm-hmm. she, she wants to go Aaron viral Dawn on social likes media. She grapes. Yeah, she, she likes wants a her nice cheap bowl grapes. Of grapes. Um, so again, it's also like, let's start with, you know, a a huge, the biggest chunk of people who are trafficked are done by a lot, are trafficked by an intimate partner. Like that's Mm -hmm. how trafficking actually occurs. However, we've seen a lot of stories on social media. So like, that's literally like all that there is to this, this claim. Anyway, Mm -hmm. the article then brings up the tragic case of Eliza Fletcher, who was an actual young woman who was abducted and murdered while jogging not all that long ago. And again, Shit happens, right? Tragic stories mm-hmm. like this do occur, but not often. There's 380 million people in this country or whatever, right? Like, it's very sad about what happened to Eliza Fletcher. Probably not something you should take general, like, information about your life on. Like, don't, And also you, that it's a some asshole crime. Yeah, it's a pe- like definitely a problem, definitely bad. Not mm-hmm. a- evidence that you are in danger, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, yeah... It's frustrating because, like, the reasonable way to respond to Eliza Fletcher is like, yeah, you should try to, like, you know, be aware of your surroundings and stuff because shit does happen. You should generally, you know, 
keep keep an eye out, you know. Uh don't lose yourself completely in, you know, whatever you're doing. You know, have some situational mm-hmm. awareness. But that always gets turned into like be frightened at all times when it, mm-hmm. you really it's like, you know, look both ways before crossing the street, you know? Uh but I don't know. And assume the absolute worst about everybody, like not mm-hmm. just the worst within the context of the situation, but the worst thing a person could possibly do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like so that 2018 story uh, of a shirt on a car being used to market is repeated in the article as evidence that these things are a, quote, common ploy of traffickers. Mm. And that's an example of kind of the article, you know, form of of spreading this disinformation. Um, mm-hmm. Another good example of, like, how this shit spreads is this 2021 TikTok video posted by a user named Mims. There, so I went to church on Sunday for about an hour and I came back out and there was melted cheese on my car. So I called my friend and her mom to come help me scrape it off. And as soon as they came, um, this white van with like stickers and they were wearing masks, smoking, um, pulled out of a parking space that was two spots away from me. And they went to the other parking lot across the street where they could watch us clean off the cheese. And here's a picture of the cheese. So this is the cheese, like halfway scraped off. It was two pieces. It would t- literally took an hour for me to scrape all this off. I personally had no idea that they were using this as a tactic to take people now. And if I hadn't called my friend, that I could have easily been taken within the hour that yeah. it took me to take off the cheese. And this happened at my church, so I can't even imagine so- where they're trying to use. It. <laughs> an hour to scrape off the cheese. Okay. It is a How single is slice of craft job. American. Also, drive yeah. home. Drive home, honey. Yeah. And then do deal like, with the cheese. Also, so, it was it was like it. it was like a craft slice. Like it was like a I single piece. Of, I don't know how that could take that long. You need multiple so, humans, but go off. So do these much people first, live in a universe without little brothers? No. <laughs> Obviously, we all saw the numbers on that video. It's been shared thousands and thousands and thousands. The huge. Mm. It's very. It, it went super viral. It is. There's a lot going on there. Like the fact that she's like, these people in a white van were wearing masks and smoking. Were they doing both of those things, Mims? Really? How right. how how does one do that? Maybe there were some lefties having a cigarette. Mm-hmm. You never know. Yeah, it was Antifa. Um, the fact that it happens in her, like, right? There, I think it's, again, I don't know. The, it, the, these things are kind of an even mix between people who are just, looking for conspiracies everywhere because the internet mm-hmm. has so thoroughly damaged them and people who are lying to get virality and followers. I don't mm-hmm. know which one Mims is. The fact that she says it's in a church parking lot, like even at church, you're not safe, right? Like everywhere is mm-hmm. dangerous. You know, they're coming after Christians, yada, yada, yada. Oh, at church, um, they're definitely not safe. I also wonder to what extent this is about like having an experience that you don't understand the logic of like there's cheese on your car if this actually yeah. happened or something like that and being trained to see any object in this case as a threat and then being like and then leaning into it and when you and maybe like elaborating and embroidering because there's like this huge incentive both to go with your fear and then to like tell this ridiculous story about it because it'll you know because not only is it altruistic but it's going to get you attention and followers yep Yep. And uh, yeah, that's that's cool. So I, I, I look into Mims because I'm trying to figure out mm. which one is she? Is she someone who's who's yeah. just terminally pilled or is she somebody who's, you know, running a running a con? Uh, mm-hmm. Her oldest video is from the start of the pandemic. She's in a car looking at a friend who's sitting in the car next to her. Pretty normal snapshot of the loneliness that came from that period of time. Right. Mm. Um, there are videos where she does like her makeup or she dances or she lifts weights, but all of those on her account get between a couple hundred and at most two or 3000 views. She has one video of herself in kind of like form fitting athletic wear, hugging a friend dressed similarly with text that says, when you hear big titties are out displayed, that's got 22,000 views. It is her second most popular video. Um, several of her videos are just like athletes try dancing, you know, stuff like that where, She's with a friend and they're like doing dances or whatever. Normal TikTok. I, I would say normal shit that looks like attempts to go viral on TikTok, right? This this looks like the account of someone who's trying out stuff to be mm. an online influencer, right? I'm going to try mm-hmm. doing the makeup, see if that works. I'm going to try doing dancing videos or workout and see if like that goes viral for me. And none of that stuff really took off. Uh, like I said, her 
her biggest other video is that like when you hear big titties are out video at 22,000 views, this, if you find a slice of cheese on your car video has 446,000 videos and I suspect uh, views and I suspect is responsible for most of her 4,000 or so followers. Mm -hmm. Um, Mims's post was duly picked up by the bottom feeders of the internet. In this case, our corporate overlords at iHeartRadio, who posted an article titled, If You oh, Find a Slice boy. of Cheese on Your Car, You Might Be in Danger. Uh, no. There's no attempt to even provide journalistic context on this one, just the line, It might sound silly, but a TikTok user named Mimi is very serious about her experience. <laughs> great, great, great work, guys. Um, now... <sighs> All of this would be easy to ignore as just more harmless disinformation if it weren't for shit like Phoebe Copas murdering Daniel Garcia, right? Like, that's that's the grounding. This is all, like, seems like silliest yeah. internet bullshit, but, like, this affects people. It causes them to think they are in danger and they take steps to defend themselves, and that sometimes leads to people getting... It's the same as those, like, stories of, like, folks shooting at people who back into their driveway to, like, turn their car around, yes. right? People die from this shit, and I guarantee you... Sometimes it's Fox, sometimes it's TikTok, sometimes it's Facebook, but it's all this shit that's everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, stuff like this have, part of what's going to spread cases like this and what's going to spread, like, death is the fact that stories like this are everywhere because they're a profitable industry, right? This is a business spreading this mm. shit. Um, I found this video on TikTok while I was doing my research for that article that's going to be on my Substack, Shatter Zone, that's got 6.9 oh, million views, and it's just a collection of everything we've talked about. Like, watch this thing. Nice. If you see this, run. If you see money in your windshield, you need to run away fast. They're trying to get you to get out of your car and grab the money. If you see this, you, away, you need to get right. in your car some other way. This is a sign that this is probably laced with something. Uh, people's hands have gone numb. They have passed out. It is a trick. Do not touch this. If you see this, they have labeled this. The this is what they're the door, labeling. Right? They're saying this is a woman who is alone. That someone has been watching you. They see you're alone. They think you're vulnerable. You need to go home and you need to cut this off. This is meant to pause you so that someone from underneath the car can cut your Achilles heel. And so that <laughs> you're distracted. It gives them enough time to get to you. So this one looks the most innocent. But you're going to notice this one. It's going to be placed here after you're already in your car. Their goal is to get you out of your car. You just want to check your surroundings, okay? Because there's so many different ways Link for people bio to get you. They don't want to get out of your items. car and be texting. You don't like, want to go to your car and be texting. This has so many views. It's been shared so widely. It's just, tr again, it's, it's let's make people scared and then sell them weapons using affiliate links on my TikTok. 6.9 million views. It's literally everything from the Snopes. Like, I think this, this was definitely made yeah. by someone who went through all of those Snopes collections of like different, of like, you know, zip tie on the door, piece of cheese, you know, fucking napkin yeah. stuck in. And they just made a video to scare people collecting all that shit. They it's used a mega mix. the disinformation debunking stuff as a source. Like, that's what this lady did. I hate, I hate this person. Um, it's a, uh, it's uh, God. Yeah. It's very crafty. I'll say that you're, you're, she's crafty. Like ice is cold. Yeah. She's crafty, crafty, like ice is cold. And you know who else is crafty? The sponsors of our show, uh, who definitely don't have anything to do with that article we talked about earlier. <laughs> Are we going to get in trouble for that one, Sophie? <laughs> nah. All right. Well, <laughs> We are back. Um, anyway, uh, so <sighs> it's cool. Um, and in addition to causing, you know, we've talked about how all of these kind of paranoia, paranoid conspiracy theories about kidnapping, in addition mm -hmm. to causing like, you know, brain damage to some people, this stuff provides cover for other <laughs> kinds of scammers. Um, mm -hmm. And this brings me to a particular new kind of con that's been enabled by modern AI tools. This is fun, Sarah. You're going to like this. You ever heard of fake kidnapping scams or virtual kidnappings? Ooh, I think as like a phishing strategy. Yeah. yeah the, uh, the idea has existed for a while. I found a 2014 warning from the San Antonio FBI press office, and I'm going to read hmm. that to you now. This is how it existed. Mm -hmm. This is how this stuff worked prior to AI, right? 
Over the past several years, San Antonio FBI, along with many state and local enforcement part, uh, law enforcement partners, received reports from the public regarding extortion schemes, often referred to as virtual kidnappings. These schemes typically involve an individual or criminal organization who contacts a victim via telephone and demands payment for the return of a kidnapped fr- family member or friend. While no actual kidnapping has taken place, the callers often use co-conspirators to convince their victims of the legitimacy of the threat. For example, a caller might attempt to convince a victim that his daughter was kidnapped by having a young female scream for help in the background during the call. Now, that's, like, not an easy con to pull off in the Mm pre-AI era. Like, not only do you have to have, like, multiple people, but, like, I don't know, like, let me talk to him, right? I'm not going to give money to a kidnapper if I can't hear from the person kidnapped, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. But AI has made that possible. Particularly the thing that's made it possible is both the existence of various AI tools that can let you kind of, like, clone or fake a voice and the fact that basically every young person is posting videos on TikTok that have their voice all the time, right? Mm. Like, so there is, it, 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 it provides you with the ability to mimic particularly people's kids with a pretty reasonable oh accuracy. And that's what we've wow. started to see. Uh, and I'm going to post for you another TikTok video, this one not uh, spreading disinformation. Um, well, Kai, well, here, I, I'm just going to play this thing. New scam alert. I usually don't fall for scams, but they got me. Listen to this. So I got a call from my mom last night around 7 p.m. The call came in. It showed her number. It showed her name, how I have it stored in my phone. I answered, hey, mom, what's up? And I heard my mom's voice like kind of fading away, like someone was taking the phone away from her. And I heard like weeps. This guy then gets on the phone and he goes, hey, I have your mom. And if you don't send me money, I'm going to kill this bitch. And I was uh, okay, who is this? Like, what is going on? Now, mind you, my mom works in home health. So her job is to go to patients' homes and do self-assessments. So in my head, I'm like, it's happened. Like, a patient has taken her hostage. And this is for real. And the guy on the phone, oh, him and his girlfriend or whoever she was, were such good actors. So he's like yelling at me and really pressuring me to get this money sent back. So like, first off, I wanted to clip, put this because it is an example of a viral TikTok post that's not spreading disinformation. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. a real thing. I have no reason to believe this woman's not telling the truth. Mm-hmm. And there is evidence from good, like reputable journalism that fake kidnapping scams like this have become more common um, because with these kind of tools, you can fake someone's voice. You know, and all you needed is a second to say, honey, help me or whatever. And then a person gets on and you do the you do the con from there. Right. Um, And like, you know, this lady, I think, did find out what was happening. But like you you can see, like. It's interesting because like she, she says, well, you know, my mom's job is going into people's houses. She's a home health care worker. So I've always in the back of my mind been worried that something might happen to her. Right. So it's both this. I've always, everyone's always anxious because we're, we're stupid monkeys. And also, you know, we all have things that we, you know, fears that are, are cognizant, right? If you have like a loved one who's got a long commute or whatever, you worry about him dying in a Mm -hmm. car crash or or something. In Mm -hmm. this case, you know, this, this, this like woman gets uh, got like these people target her for whatever reason. And uh, like, yeah, that's tough. Cause like. You're not stupid if you hear your loved one's voice and someone say, send me money. I have th- mm-hmm. You're not dumb or gullible for falling for that. That's an insane thing to have to be worried about, right? Yeah. That like someone yes. can fake your mom's voice. That's nuts. That's like, like, again, it's, it, and it's, but it's also, I do think the, the climate of all of these fake stories makes decent people more likely to fall for stuff like this because mm-hmm. they're already primed to believe there's kidnapping gangs everywhere, right? Right. Um, and because everywhere you look, there's something you've never heard of happening. So yeah. in a sense, why not this other thing? <laughs> this is why my general response to anyone who calls me is, go ahead, kill them. I don't care. I say that no matter <laughs> why they call. That's actually you know? how you answer the phone. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, Robert. And you're like, yeah. go ahead, kill them. Fucking I don't cut care. their throat. I don't give a shit. And I'm like, uh, all right. Is the episode <laughs> good? Yeah. Can I publish it? Coffee. Death. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Kill so the anyway, hostage, Sophie, do it. But, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Like again, you don't need to be worried about kidnapping, but you should, as we're going to talk about, you should be worried about getting scammed because it's scams are more common than they've ever been, and mm. they are more tailored towards individual people because of the kind mm-hmm. of tools that exist. Um, the first of these scams have started hitting victims, as I've stated. In April of this year, an Arizona family received a phone call from their 15-year-old daughter who sounded distraught and handed the phone over to a man who told them, you call the police, you call anybody, I'm going to pop her so full of drugs, I'm going to have my way with her, and I'm going to drop her off in Mexico. And you see, again, it's all the shit we've been talking about since Phoebe Copas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's kidnapping gangs. There's drugs that people have that will knock folks out. Uh, you know, probably a little bit of fentanyl conspiracy shit mixed in yeah. with that. There's Mexico, right? You There's bring up Mexico, vacation. that scares people. Yeah. Yeah. Like all of these, it's all, all there. Um, now, thankfully, in this case, this, the girl who like got her voice cloned for this scam, her mom was like at a public place. So she gets the call and she freaks out like you do when you think mm-hmm. your daughter's been kidnapped. Very reasonable time to freak out. But other people around her, they call 911 and like, have the presence of mind to call her husband mm. and be like, is your daughter around? And he's like, yeah, she's at home. And they're like, okay, ma'am, you're, we're good. <laughs> like something else is happening here, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But you know, it, 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 sh- it illustrates how advanced these scams have become. The, the mom in this case later told local news, it was completely her voice. It was her inflection. It was the way she would have cried. I never doubted yeah. for one second. It was her. That's the freaky part that really got me to my core. Um, yeah. Which, like, yeah, that uh, that would be very frightening, right? Very f- most people now that you've been uh, you're aware that this is a thing. It, it's kind of like you know, uh, kidnappers in a fuck, or it's kind of like hijackers in a plane with box cutters, right? That's a real threat when it's never happened before. Now, if anyone tried mm-hmm. to like take over a plane with box cutters, everyone in the plane's going to beat them to death with luggage, right? Like it's that's, yeah, the golden days what? of shoe bobbing are long <laughs> yeah. gone. Yeah, exactly. Um, but. You know, when you're not aware that this is a scam, of, of course it is fucking mm-hmm. horrifying, harrowing. Um, and that brings us to the hidden bastard for this week's episode. I know Ooh. it's taken several hours to get to this point, Sarah. I'm sorry. Um, We're already a thousand years old. Yeah, it's getting a little older. Exactly. Exactly. We are we are ancients, as old as the trees. I am mm-hmm. I am an int. You know. Uh, I yeah. I remember. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Um, Good help hobbits. So. Yeah, obviously, like, Phoebe Copas did a horrible thing. Um, but the part of why she did that horrible thing was that she had been kind of this this ever-present ecosystem of you are in danger, you are at risk, people are attacking you. Like, most people aren't going to murder someone, you know, even if they buy into mm-hmm. that stuff. But a certain number of people will murder people as a result mm-hmm. of this kind of shit, right? Um and I think one of the things that feeds into that ever-present feeling that you're at risk, that you're under attack, that you have to defend yourself, is that all of us are under attack at all times mm. uh, through every single form of communication that we own. The attack is not kidnapping gangs. It's not human traffickers. But, like, look at how many emails you've gotten today and and comb through your spam filter. See how many of them are attempts for people to fish you. Or to mm-hmm. like, how many text messages or phone calls did you get today that are from scam likely, you know? Um, how many like pieces of things, like shit did you get in the mail? Like, w- like I got a call this morning from a lovely British robot who wanted to sell me health insurance. Exactly. That is an attack, right? That's not an attack like a kidnapping. It's not something mm-hmm. that, but it is, that is someone trying to harm you, right? Mm-hmm. Like Sarah, someone tried to hurt you today. Through the phone, you know, someone is trying to hurt all of us every day through our phones and various other methods of communication. And what Um, did we learn? How is Sarah supposed to answer the phone from now on? Kill the hostage. Uh, Kill the hostage. That's right. We all (laughs) really, Sarah, all of this, we could all learn a lot from the movie Speed, right? Put a bullet in that hostage's kneecap. Do do what Keanu would do. It's only Jeff Daniels. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was Jeff Daniels, huh? I like him. Um, So I feel like the fact that we are all constantly being attacked by con artists, you know, even if the vast majority of those attacks fail, even if the vast majority of those are obvious and laughable, contributes to the mindset that 
makes people more likely to believe this kind of kidnapping shit, right? We're mm-hmm. paranoid. There's reason to be paranoid, but it's not, there's nothing fun in being like, well, because of a variety of different kinds of deregulation and just plain old failures to foresee any need for regulation, every method of communication we have has been infested by con artists and scammers to a degree mm-hmm. that has never been present in human history before. And that contributes to a mindset where people don't trust anybody else, right? Instead of saying that, like, we want to believe, it's just sexier to believe that you're like the center of a Taken story, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, And instead of being attacked by 1,000 tiny scammers every week who are trying to make a little bit of money, it's it's like a fabulous espionage kidnapping ring. Yeah, that's much sexier. And it's, but I I do want to kind of, I want to spend a little bit of time here at the end Talking about how bad this has gotten in numbers, because I think this Mm. is something everyone's sort of aware that we're all Mm -hmm. getting approached by scammers more often. But like there's this isn't just a thing that you think because it happens to you might be more Mm -hmm. common. This is objectively happening. Phishing scams hit a historic high in Q4 of 2022 with 4.7 million reported attacks, which is a 150 percent increase since 2019. Uh, a research uh, write up I found from a research firm Comparatech noted, quote, October 2022 saw more than 100,000 unique email subject lines, the largest number uh, ever recorded. This shows that hackers are more likely than ever to tailor their approach rather than using the same template for every victim. This is one of these things that like the increasing development of these AI tools has allowed is it makes it easier to kind of instead of like going for the lowest common denominator actually tailoring stuff for individuals, right? Like you can't do a fake kidnapping scam where you're cloning somebody's mom's voice without like targeting that person. You're not like randomly going after that, right? It's because it's it takes some effort to clone a voice like that. You have to know something about the person. Mm-hmm. And this is what we're seeing across the board. Not only a growth in the number of scams tar- targeting Americans, but smarter and more personalized scams. Um, it remains true that about 95% of all cybersecurity issues are the result of human er error. But I think that statistic is actually the way it is framed as problematic. Because when you say 95% of cybersecurity issues, the result of human error, what I think most people hear is that like, oh, a dummy clicked a link they shouldn't have clicked. What a dummy. No, no, no. It's a human error. If you wire someone money because you believe your mom has been kidnapped, Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's not understandable if you're not aware of the con, right? Um, See, and and the fact that people feel like if I fall for something, if I get conned, I did something dumb means they don't report when they're victimized a lot because they think people will make fun of them. This is an actual problem, right? This is a societal level problem that people feel this way when they are victimized. Zscaler's Threat Lab's 2023 phishing report warned that ChatGPT and other AI tools can also be used to create fake login pages for users who have no coding knowledge themselves. They can use these fake login pages in order to like fake that it's someone's bank or whatever, and they can insert malware through that. They can get, you know, there's a wide variety of ways they can fuck with people through that. And eventually, these same AI tools will be utilized effectively in like, um, you know, software that is meant to protect people from this, but it's just not good at that yet. There's too many false positives, like when you're scanning email, you know, using Mm -hmm. AI tools and whatnot to try to determine which ones are phishing attempts. And like, if a quarter of your emails are getting like deleted by an AI because it mistakenly thinks that they're, you know, that causes a problem for you. You just can't, it's, it's, what I'm saying here is that I'm not trying to fear monger about the technology in general. What I'm saying is that new technology tends to be more profitable for attackers before it becomes useful for defending people in in, (laughs) in this situation. And so that's part of the problem. The primary victims of this new wave of scams are the elderly. Uh, The FBI Internet Crime Report last year claimed that Americans over age 60 lost an estimated $1.7 billion to fraud, the highest number ever reported for any age group. And an increase, you want to guess how much this amount has increased over the last three years? Oh God. So 300%. Okay, well, no, not not quite that high. But it is an increase of 84% since 2021. That's like still so much. Yeah, that it's a huge, it's like so much more common now. I found an article, a very good article in The Advocate, that gives some texture to the kinds of scams that are increasingly hitting the elderly. 
Matthews, 52, of Baton Rouge, told victims he could make investments on their behalf, assured, uh, assured them that they could make high rates of return, and threatened to injure them if they did not make payments, according to his guilty plea. In a similar case in April, Mohammed Alam, 50, pleaded guilty to a computer fraud scheme that targeted elderly victims in the U.S., including Louisiana, and took in about 340000 in fraudulent profits. Alam and other members of the scheme tricked victims into thinking their computers needed support, then offered to fix them for a fee. After the victims paid, Alam would seek access to their bank accounts under the guise that they were entitled to a discount and manipulate account balances so the victims thought that they owed money to the computer company. So adults age 60 and older are not only likelier to be scammed, they are the least likely to report being victimized to the authorities. They don't want to call the police. Again, this is like when these people, when victims are interviewed, the number one reason they give for not reporting that they've been victimized is they think they will be blamed or mocked for falling for a con. Yeah. Um, Kathy Stokes, director of fraud prevention for the AARP, told the advocate this. Well, you gave someone that information, so there's nothing we can do. Fundamentally, we've got to change that. People are losing what amounts to generational wealth these days. Mm. Like, we're not just talking about nickel and diming people. We are talking about taking someone's retirement savings, you know, mm. taking money that they would have passed on to their kids. Like, we are talking about, like, people are, people's lives are being destroyed by this stuff. Um, and there's, again, they, they don't even feel like they can report having huge amounts of money stolen from them because they'll be mocked for, like, being a dumb old person who fell for a scam. That's like somebody building a fake website to trap them and shit a lot of the time. Sometimes, yeah, people are greedy or whatever mm-hmm. and they get trapped that way. But like phone scams are close to an all-time high. Phishing scams and text message scams are hitting people at the highest levels ever. And add into this the fact that social media has like sent, spent years goading people to read and report and share paranoid conspiracy theories. It shouldn't be surprising that by most measurements, social trust in American society is at its lowest level in living memory. In the early 1970s, when chain letters about backseat slashers went from mailbox to mailbox, about half of Americans reported to the American National Election Survey that they believed most people could be trusted. Today, less than a third of Americans respond the same way. A recent poll found that social trust is lowest for Americans over 65, which is understandable when you realize how much of them are being bombarded by attempts to steal their fucking savings. And it's like, I don't know, like that's that's kind of what I've got so far. I don't... I don't know what to do about this because like I, I kind of low key think this is one of the biggest problems in the country. This is like, mm-hmm. you know, when you talk about people being worried that, you know, of civil violence of like, you know, we're going to have like, like this feeds into that to a huge degree. Like look mm-hmm. up those stories of people shooting folks in their driveway. They're not young, right? They're old yeah. people. And I, and I don't, please don't take this as me being like, it's understandable that they murdered a young woman in their driveway. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, but When you bombard people both with conspiracy theories about how they're in danger and you're Mm -hmm. also constantly trying to rob them every hour of every day, some of them will lose their minds and a lot of them will have guns. You know, like it's Mm -hmm. that's a problem. We should deal with it. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Yeah. And, you know, and he makes some good points. (laughs) But I really think there's a bigger problem in this country and it's mm. that someone put keys on a car. Someone put uh, she- <laughs> Well, you know, like like I always say, you, you say this often in your podcast, you're wrong about, if you see cheese on your car, pull out a Glock and just open fire. <laughs> Empty it into if, your car. If you car. see cheese on your car, just... Yeah, just dump the mag into it. Set off a bomb, honestly. Yeah. Just yeah. level yeah. the city you're in. It's time to start well, over. Th- this is why I always say, never go any public place without a 6,000 pound ammonium nitrate bomb, you know, mm. just in case you'd rather need it's it. You're common ra- sense. You do yeah. say that often B- better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You know, that's why I always <laughs> tow a rider truck behind my car. Mm-hmm. Just, just always ready, you know, in case I, I have to detonate a parking lot to protect can, myself. Can confirm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Sarah, what do you, what do we do, what do we do here? How do we fix this? <laughs> ah, oh gosh, I mean, I think that a lot of this problem, as far as I can tell, is people replacing their actual life with the internet and various yeah. other forms of media. You know, the epidemic of loneliness among Americans and especially Americans over sixty. Um, I really think that part of the answer is for us to actually talk to each other more, which is. Um, Slightly ironic for me to be saying because we are doing this over Zoom, but uh, <laughs> hey, I'm yep. looking you in the face. 
Yeah, that's, that's right. Something. And and that's right. and I'll see you in like an hour and a half in person. Yeah, yeah. and we're yeah. gonna eat yeah. popcorn together. Eat yeah. more popcorn together. Eat cheese together. Yeah, not alone. Don't but put it on somebody's car. Eat if it. you see eat a water it. bottle on your, your car again, hand grenade. You know, keep yes. one of those German stick grenades in your belt at all time, so you can just hurl it at your vehicle if you see a trash bag nearby that scares you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to, the point is that if you kill absolutely everyone, you mm-hmm. will be safe. This and I is think why that's the end game of all this. <laughs> yeah, well, that that's why you know I'm glad that we finally have a movie uh, coming out about my personal hero, Robert Oppenheimer. <laughs> I think the real tragedy of Oppenheimer is that we stopped at like twelve or thirteen thousand nuclear weapons. Right? We need one for every person on every. If everyone has exactly. a nuke. Like, look at how peaceful relations between the U.S. and the Soviet Union stayed because of all the nukes. If we each have a nuke, right, everything's fine. Yes, peace through proliferation, just like Ronnie said. Just like Ronnie said. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Sarah, you got anything to plug? I have a podcast called You're Wrong About. It's also very much about bastards. Um, If if you like this show... um, I'm not going to tell you that you will like my show. You could like my show, but I don't know. I won't tell you what to do, but that's my show. (laughs) I have a feelings podcast about movies called You Are Good. And um, I want to plug um, the Lloyd Center Ice Rink in Portland, Oregon. There is talk of it being demolished. Don't let it happen. Go skating with your friends. Protect the Lloyd Center Ice Rink. But again, if you're in that parking lot, you know, all bets are off. You better roll in with an armored vehicle. <laughs> uh, good stuff. All right. That's the episode. Bye-bye. Behind the Bastards is a production of Cool Zone Media. For more from Cool Zone Media, visit our website, coolzonemedia.com. Or check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.